Hello, good morning to all. I Kusum Chaudhary, Assistant Professor in School of Architecture, Kalgotias University. So today um, we will start with your uh, next module, which is M14 RCC. So in the previous lecture, I had discussed about the brick masonry tools. So in this current uh, lecture, we will uh, start with the brick masonry and the types of the brick bond. So let's start with the lecture. So uh, here in this slide are given uh, five objective of this module. Uh, first one is illustrate reinforced cement concrete construction techniques. Second one is apply reinforced cement concrete structural analysis to a residence design institutional building for children with RCC and four is illustrate architectural historical concept from Renaissance period to Rococo period. Uh, fifth is apply basic concept of soil mechanics. Start with what is brick masonry. Brick is a building unit which is in the form of rectangular block. For example, in this image you can see uh, the rectangular block in which length to breadth ratio is 2 but height can be different. And uh, now we comes on the masonry. What is mean by masonry? For, uh, for example, in this image you can see construction of building unit. For example, uh, there are two unit that can be of brick, stone, bonded together with the help of the mortar that can be cement mortar, lime mortar and we can use um, uh, in some places mud also for binding the two material. So that is the process known as the masonry. Here are given some brick masonry uniqueness, fire resistant, uh, size, durability, workability and economical. So now we comes on the characteristics of bricks. Here are given some characteristics of brick. Brick will not burn, buckle or melt. Brick will not rot and allow termite to invade. Brick will not rust and corrode. It should not dent. Brick will not fade from sun UV rays. Uh, it should not be damaged by high wind, rain or hail not required constant maintenance, not devalue, brick will not limit your personal expression, brick will not limit your design options. So these are the some characteristics of the brick. Here are given some advantages of brick masonry. As we all know, brick is mostly and commonly used material. Uh, the brick masonry is cheaper than compared to stone masonry because uh, uh, we can say uh, in comparison of stone, brick doesn't need any type of dressing. That's why it's cheaper compared to stone masonry. Brick are of uniform size. Bricks are very workable and easily workable also. Brick are very light in weight. So that's why these are uh, easily handled during the construction. No complicated lifting devices are necessary in brick work because they are easily handled and lightweight. Uh, there is no problem uh, to its availability because they are easily available and uh, commonly used and uh, they do not require transportation from long distances. Um, brick work can be done by the less skilled labor also. So that's why they are not uh, so costly. Um, bonding strength is very good and brick work is more durable. Um, that's why uh, brick have these all advantages. So uh, in this slide here you can see uh, manufacturing process of brick. There are given four different operations are involved in the process of manufacturing of brick. First one is pr preparation of clay and second we have to molding that can be uh, hand molding for small scale and the machine molding for the large scale. Next is the drying and at the last we have to burn the our bricks. So uh, in this first image here you can see the clay which is very raw and uh, next uh, you can see the mold and 
at the uh, third uh, images there are uh, lots of brick uh, which are uh, placing for the drying process and the, at the last uh, you can see in the clean where we are uh, burning the brick for the last and final stage. So here are given some uh, brick courses and closures. First one is queen closure. These are the some uh, other different types of brick which are used during the uh, brick masonry construction. So first one is the uh, queen closure. A brick cut in half. That is cut in half uh, down its length. So that, that's why it is known as, as the queen closure. Next is the king closure. A brick cut a corner. Uh, middle point of the width and the middle point of the width and the middle point of the length of the brick. So that's why this part is known as the queen closer. Now three quarter bed. A brick cut to three quarter of its length and laid, laid with its long narrow side exposed. That is known as the three quarter brick. You can see in this image. This is the example of three quarter brick. Now half bed, a brick cut in half across its, its width and laid in the uh, wall structure. That is the half bed. Now quarter bed, uh, a brick cut to a quarter of its length. That is the quarter bed. This is the quarter bed. This is the half bed, which is uh, is cutting from the half of the width and the half of the uh, length of the brick. So that's why uh, this is known as the half bed. Now we comes on the bonds in brick works. Here are given some different types of uh, brick bond. First one is English bond, Flemish bond, header bond, stature bond, facing bond. Uh, English cross bond, brick on edge bond, Dutch bond, racking bond, garden wall bond. So uh, in this image you can see this is part is known as the header which is the shorter side of the brick that is the uh, header and which is the longer side of the brick that part is known as the stature. So uh, this is the elevation of the these three types of bond, English bond, Flemish bond and stretcher bond. In the English bond, we have alternate courses. First course is uh, stretcher and the uh, second course is header that is known as the English bond. In the Flemish bond, we have alternate courses in the same layer First uh, brick is uh, stretcher and the second uh, side is the header. Fit, uh, next is uh, stretcher and then header. So uh, this type of co uh, course is known as the Flemish bond. And in the stretcher head uh, bond, we have all the bricks are laid on the stretcher side uh, at the longer uh, face side of the brick. So that's why it is known as the stretcher bond. As you can see, all uh, these bricks are laid on the longer side, longer face side. So that's why uh, this is known as the stretcher bond. So let's start with the uh, first brick bond is Flemish bond. This bond has one stretcher between header with the header center over the stretcher in the course below. As you can see in this figure, uh, we have first uh, brick is stretcher, then we have header, stretcher, header. In the next, um, uh, this is the first course and this is the third course and this is the fifth course. So in the alternate first and third course, we have the same repetition, stretcher, header, stretcher, header and stretcher. When a course begin with a stretcher the course will ordinarily terminate with a stretcher at the end as you can see in this uh, course we are starting uh, this course with stretcher and ending with the stretcher also brickwork that appear as flemish bond from one uh, from both the front and the rear is double flemish bond next brick bond we have english bond Brick are laid in alternate courses of header and stretcher. For example, uh, the first uh, layer is uh, header and the uh, second layer 
of a structure and the alternate in the alternate layer we have the header structure header structure there is a chance of penetration of damp through transverse the joints coin closer are inserted next to header to produce overlap english bond are the strongest but it is to be noted that the continuous vertical joint are to be avoided as you can see the uh, vertical joints are continuously avoided they are not in the same line appearance is not as good as flemish bond if we will talk about the flemish bond that are uh, more aesthetically as comparison to english bond next bond we have header bond the shorter side of the uh, brick that is known as the header heading or header bond is laid on header Uh, should never be used in straight work as it is very weak so that's why we should avoid it uh, this bond is used for facing or curved surface and footing in foundation so because it is uh, weak in strength so that's why we used uh, for facing of curved surface and footing in foundation so uh, as you can see in this image uh, the header side of the brick so that's why uh, it is known as the header bond next is stretcher bond it is uh, uh, also clear by its name uh, stretcher bond in this type of bond we have all the brick uh, front laid by the stretcher the longer side of the brick this bond is the simplest bond that is used today this bond is not suitable as a stand alone structure wall and the structure wall is formed directly behind it fixed with, with wall ties stretcher bond are typically used as a facade for the main structure building it may look very plain but very effective with the introduction of other pattern so uh, this is example of stretcher bond in this slide here uh, i mention a elevation of wall here are given some different terminolo terminology uh, related to the brick uh, wall so you, you can see the stretcher course uh, this is the header course uh, bed joint where we place the cement mortar that part is known as the bed joint this is the horizontal uh, joint and uh, this part is known as the queen closer as i earlier mentioned about the queen closer uh, which is used for the avoiding the vertical joints in the uh, brick masonry and next we have queen header this is the queen header and uh, uh, racking band this part is known as the racking uh, racking back which is can be used for the uh, next uh, day for the continuation of the wall the, and this part is known as the perpend where is uh, uh, you can see the vertical joints so this is known as the perpend so uh, these were the some uh, terminology related to the wall so at the end i would like to conclude this lecture uh, by the uh, few points while constructing or supervising a brick construction the following points should be kept in, in mind the brick should be properly soaked in water before they are used uh, second one is the brick should be so laid that their frog face upward because uh, that can be uh, good grip with the cement mortar mortar used should be as stiff as possible the vertical joints of alternate course should be in one line the walls should be raised uniformly and vertically of the wall should be tested at every course six is all the joints should be of equal thickness and the thickness of each should not be exceed 0.5 to 1 cm in one day not more than 1.5 m of wall in height should be constructed if the full length of the wall is not approachable then raking back must be provided as i show uh, in the 
previous uh, slide and uh, previous uh, images which is the elevation of wall uh, the work should be kept wet from 4 to 7 days until the mortar set and become hard so uh, these were the some uh, points that should be kept in mind during the brick construction now uh, we have some questions for assignment first one is what is mean by brick masonry second is explain the characteristics of and advantage of brick masonry third is what are the classification of brick uh, second is explain the following type of brick bond first one is english and flemish bond red trap bond header and stature bond so uh, you have to um, support your answer with the suitable uh, sketches and the terminologies so uh, thank you everyone for lis listening and watching this video lecture.